Hi, thank you, Baptist Standard, for allowing me this opportunity to preach this sermon. I have uh, been walking through the um, 150 Psalms on my Wednesday night in my Wednesday night Bible study, and um, interestingly enough, there's one Psalm that really has stood out to me most, and that's Psalm 39. In my life, there have been times where I get so frustrated with people, almost to the point where it just immobilizes me. My mind can't stop thinking about what somebody said or did. It keeps me up at night. And so just trying to navigate in those times can be, navigate life in those times can be difficult. I think Psalm 39 gives us, myself, instruction on how to live life when you're in the presence of people that are different, that are, the psalmist would say, wicked, um, that are your enemies, that maybe seek to do harm to you. And so this has been a revelation for me. A lot of pastors have so much more biblical knowledge than I do. Um, whenever I read Psalm 39, <laughs> I looked at it and I said, man, like, has this been in the Bible the whole time? And so it's proved to be very helpful for me. And I hope it blesses you as well. This is what it says. It says, it's a Psalm of David written for a music director. It begins in verse 1 by saying, I said, I will watch my ways. I will keep my tongue from sin. I will put a muzzle on my mouth while in the presence of the wicked. I will. I, so I remained utterly silent, not even saying anything good. So he's in the presence of the wicked. He's trying to put a muzzle on his mouth for the very purpose, he says, so I don't sin. I can't say anything. I don't want to say anything bad. Because I know that when I open my mouth, it will not end well. I don't want to say anything good because it will be disingenuous. So I'm just going to shut up. I'm not going to say a single, I'm not going to say a single word. And I think there is probably some wisdom in this because the next thing he does is he goes to the Lord. Um, one of the commentaries I read said that he then pursues silent meditation so he's not just silent for being, uh, for silence sake. He's, he's silent, but he's trying to meditate on something good. And so he goes and, and speaks to the Lord. Let's see what he says. He says, I didn't say anything good, but my anguish increased. My heart grew hot within me. And while I meditated, the fire burned. And then I spoke with my tongue. So what he's saying here is, say, what he's saying is when I didn't speak, Things actually got a little worse for me. I, I grew like this fire within me. Um, I was experiencing great anguish. And for those who are like open processors who have to like process things verbally, uh, you know how this feels. Whenever you don't talk, it's like, it's like you, um, you feel like there's something within you that needs to come out. And it's frustrating when you can't say it. And so this is this is where he's at. And so then he finally decides to speak. He finally decides to speak, but he speaks not to his enemies. He speaks to the Lord. He says, Then I spoke with my tongue. Show me, Lord, my life's end and the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting my life is. You have made my days a mere handbreadth. It's like the width of like the width of one's hand. The span of my years is as nothing before you. And he says, he says this next sentence twice in this psalm. He says, everyone is but a breath, even those who seem secure. Surely everyone goes around like a mere phantom. In vain they rush about, heaping up wealth without, knowings, without knowing whose it will finally be. So 
in response to his anger for those people out there, he goes to the Lord and he asks the Lord, God, teach me how short this life is. Teach me that I don't have that many days left. Teach me what's important. Show me, God, what should be significant in my life. Because all of this stuff that I have, he says, I don't even know who that's going to go to when I die. So God, you teach me your ways. Show me that everyone is but a breath. Then he says in verse 7, but now, Lord, what do I look for? My hope is in you. Save me from all of my transgressions. Do not make me the scorn of fools. I was silent. I would not open my mouth for you are the one who has done this. You are the one that's judging me. What he's saying is you're the one that's judging me with your hand from my own transgressions. Remove your scourge from me. I am overcome by the blow of your hand. When you, re when you rebuke and discipline anyone for their sin, you consume their wealth like a moth. Surely, he repeats this, surely everyone is but a breath. So you see God's judgment here for his own sins. He's saying, listen, I have my own transgressions. Your hand is upon me. Your, judge, your judging hand is now uh, rebuking me. And he sees it clearly. And it has less to do with his enemies and it has more to do with him. And he says, hear my prayer, Lord, in verse 12. Listen to my cry for help. Do not be deaf to my weeping. I dwell, I dwell with you as a foreigner, a stranger, as my ancestors were. Uh, I dwell with you as a foreigner, as a stranger. God, you know, I think what he's saying here is, God, like I have nothing compared to you. I went down to the border um, recently and I worked with people that were asylum seekers from South American countries. And it's interesting, I worked with like 12 people and none of them had anything on them. They had nothing. They might have had a small bag. There were kids that didn't have any toys. They had never even seen a toy before. So it was great to show them this. But I was working with people who had nothing and they had no clue where their next meal was going to come from. I was thinking about that from my perspective where I felt like I had everything. I had every I have everything and I'm overweight and I overeat compared to them I had so much and what he's saying what he's saying here is God I'm like this alien here I have nothing without you I am nothing without you God you have completely stripped me away I'm nothing without you and then he closes with this, look away from me that I may enjoy my life again. God, please remove your judgment from me so that I might enjoy life before I depart and am no more. So God, take away your judgment before, before this life ends for me, which it did. You know, when I, when I think about this, when I think about this passage, I think about just the, the growth in David in this psalm and how at first he was focused on his enemies and and those that his detractors that were around him and then eventually he got to the point where he was like okay god like this is just I, what i realized is this is just you and me um you know in the on palm sunday during the triumphal entry during the time of passover thousands of people came and they cried out hosanna hosanna save me now right uh, we experienced this this past Sunday. Uh, they they wanted they wanted Jesus to be their political king, um, to to save them from from Rome. He started to weep. Jesus started to weep in their presence because he knew the shallowness of their faith. Their main concern was I we need somebody to defeat my enemies. I need somebody to take care of these issues. 
but really Jesus came to consume our hearts. And so I want this, I hope this is, uh, I hope this is an encouragement to you in the days ahead, that whenever, whenever you have those people in your life that, that maybe want to hurt you um, or have hurt you, I hope that you aren't fixated on them, that you allow your focus to be Jesus. God bless you.